members of the other candidates and then other candidates in 45 seconds will vote. After my eight prepared questions, then the candidates themselves will have an opportunity to ask each other three questions. And uh, Sheriff Chrysler will go first when it comes to asking the three questions. After the candidates' questions, then we'll have audience questions. And uh, audience questions will be determined, or who can answer will be determined by the audience questions. And if you have a question, uh, we have two students. We have Ms. Courtney Gray, and we have Mr. Roger Taylor. They'll be passing out cards to those who wish to write on them to submit a question, where Ms. Jackie Woods will uh, be reading them, and then they'll have to be an audience for them. After audience questions, uh, then we'll have our closing statements, and then we'll take them from there. Okay. And so all the candidates are preparing their asking and answering questions, that's the time for the audience to write those questions. So, let's get the candidates. Sheriff Crystal served 21 years in the United States Armed Forces Services as a Navy soldier and airman. He is a highly decorated war veteran with two combat tours in Iraq, the first Gulf War and Iraq Operation, Iraqi Freedom. In 2008, Mr. Crystal retired from the U.S. Air Force as a major. His other careers include 18 years as a Heinz County Deputy Chair, several years as the Chief, Chief of the Utica Police Department, two terms as a Jackson City Council member, over 15 years as an adjunct professor at both Jackson City University and Delphine University, and served as District Director of Adult Education and Dropout Recovery at Heinz Community College for six years. He returned to City of Jackson Government in 2014, where he served as Chief Administrative Officer and Public Safety Commissioner. Mr. Crystal received the unanimous vote from the Hines County Board of Supervisors to be the interim sheriff of Hines County, hereby replacing the late sheriff of the Vance. Now for Captain Jones. Appointed by Sheriff Lee Vance in 2019, Captain Tyree Jones leads the Criminal Investigation Division of the Hines County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Jones had graduated from St. Joseph Catholic High School in the spring of 1996 before going on to study at Cumberland College at Bell Haven University in business administration. He began his career in law enforcement as an honor graduate of the 28th recruit class of the City of Jackson Police Academy. Uh, Captain Jones served 20 consecutive years in the City of Jackson Police Department from a police recruit, rising through the ranks from the position of commander prior to the department. During his tenure with Jackson, the Jackson Police Department, he served in various divisions to include patrol, patrol operations, DEA task force, robbery homicide detective, patrol sergeant, investigation sergeant, commander of the violent crimes division, public information officer, and SWAT logistics officer. During his time, he received numerous awards for excellent work and leadership exemplified. Those are our candidates. We'll give them a round of applause. Okay, so now we're going to have opening statements and two minutes each. Uh, we'll start with Captain Jones. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for this uh, platform and thank you to Jackson State uh, University for allowing us to come here tonight and be able to share our vision as we attempt to move uh, Hines County forward in a safe direction. Another thing is happy Veterans Day to my uh, chair, chair, interim chair, as well as happy Veterans Day to all of those that are in attendance and those that are watching. Of course, uh, as I've been introduced, I am Captain Tyree Jones. I am a 22 year consecutive law enforcement professional here in Jackson, Mississippi, in Hines County. I have served my 10 years solely in Hines County. Uh, this, is, this is my home. This is where I have continued to serve my home. I haven't wanted to go anywhere else but continue to serve the people of Jackson, Mississippi, and Hines County. The passion that I have for the people trust that I have developed from the people in our communities is the driving force who want me to continue to be in law enforcement and continue to want to be elected as your best highest county sheriff. I have the knowledge, I have the training, and I have the expertise that is needed to lead the highest county sheriff department forward as well as the citizens of highest county in a safe direction. Good evening. It is a pleasure to be here. I just want to thank uh, those 
just want to take an opportunity to uh, recognize um, my family and my wife, uh, Judy Love Pamela Kirsten, with me, and uh, want to say how excited I am to be in this position. Tonight, I hope to make a clear distinction um, as to why I believe that I'm the best uh, candidate in this race, uh, based on a couple of things. This uh, race will be determined by who is most prepared to lead the office.
be deceived by a phony at one time during his tenure. On the crime scene, dressed in public, assuring the public that they would be safe. So, with that being said, that qualifies me over my candidates, over my opponent, along with some other issues as well that we will continue to address throughout this hour. Uh, well, thank you. Well, let me just say this. Uh, okay. uh,
And so again, I think it's uh, coming upon us as uh, voters and certainly citizens is recognize that the board had to make a decision, uh, a snap decision, because we lost one of the greatest crime fighters in uh, Mississippi history, quite frankly. And uh, I think that they looked at me and my background uh, from a wide variety of, of, of spectrum and decided that I was best qualified to hold the position.
also say a 24th century crime plan is what deals with that. It breaches the other law. We talked about mental health crisis. We got to make sure that we deal with the mental health crisis going on in our city. We also want to deal with issues with social services. We have a problem with that. We have a great problem. And let me say it's fine. We all want to hold parents accountable who have no knowledge that their child is in possession of a firearm. That is considered contributing to the delinquency of the mind. And we want to take a tough stand on those parents who are recklessly allowing their children to possess firearms and hurt others. Thank you very much. Indirect response to uh, uh, our uh, statement. First of all, you have to know what the gun laws are for you and your risk gun violence. My opponent was quoted in the last form here in Jackson State saying you had to be 21 years of age to possess a gun. That's not the law. So they started on the wrong already. The law is 21 years of age to purchase a handgun. A gun. 20, I'm sorry, 18 years of age to possess it. It's also not illegal against the law for a 16 year old that's driving a vehicle to have a gun in a vehicle that's not in their immediate possession. Then the fact that your vehicle is an extension of your home, that does not make it illegal for a weapon to be in that vehicle. So before we move forward with addressing gun violence and gun crimes, we must first know what our laws are and how to address those particular laws as well. Not only that, you have to have a plan in place, partnerships in place, which I have been a part of throughout my career, having successful partnerships with outside agencies as well as your agencies to address the gun violence and the possessors of illegal guns as well. If you look at the statistics, the majority of the violent crimes that are being committed in the city of Jackson right now and in our community are not convicted felons with firearms. Some of them have not been convicted of a crime, but they are, there are some convicted felons in possession of firearms as well. Not only that, I will utilize the necessary resources that I have within the agency. And I would not use the resources that are within the agency for my own personal good. If you have people that are in the agency that should be out addressing crimes, addressing gun violence, and my opponent here uses the Morris Division to drive him around, to be his bodyguards, when they should be out addressing violent crime, more visibility in our community. When you have more visibility and you have men and women in your department that you can utilize resourcefully, that's what they should be doing instead of driving you around and being your personal bodyguards and different functions and different uh, venues throughout the city. So again, that's one way that I plan to address it, utilize the men and women in my department to address the gun violence, the gun issues, and whatever other issues there are. Thank you.
had three years of college. I have hundreds of hours of law enforcement training here in the city of Jackson as well as across the country as well. I have been trained in series of several areas stemming from uh, patrol, narcotics, homicide investigations, crime scene investigations, uh, which is the FBI Command College, which is a known distinct leadership uh, school that I also attended as well. But I am all for training, and I think another thing that is very important that law enforcement has to be very, very serious about it and goes in is mental health training as well. I had recent mental health training through coalition and partnerships that we've had with uh, Heinz Behavioral Health Systems. So you have to continue to train not only yourself, but the men and women of your department as well, as it relates to making sure that they're up on their certifications, that they're up on the most recent training that is available to law enforcement today. If you don't have that, if something happens, then you will somewhat be liable for whatever happens if that particular training has not been done. So you have to have quarterly training, annual training, whatever is good. Not only that, you want to be able to have training above and beyond what is, what is necessary or required to make sure that you're committing, again, a proper training. Again, I have several hours over my 22 year law enforcement career of training. I have been in several schools, and I have the most recent training in several divisions as well. Thank you so much. Uh, and as we mentioned, I have um, two degrees from Augusta one from High School College, and one from here, all my college of Jackson State University. Now, why am I 
I'm saying this. Because what our job ought to be, if we're on the correction side of the house, is that we ought to be trying to make sure the people that we're arrested are better when they come out than when they go in. So one of the things we can do is certainly help them get a skill set where they can make a living wage when they come out of uh, the uh, prison or out of the jail in order to make that living wage. What I mean is, uh, as the former district director of uh, dropout recovery and the low education and high school college, one of the programs I had a hand in is the adult education program or the GD program, the workforce development program. So I already have a partnership in that relationship with high school college. I still serve as adjunct professor for high school. So I do hope and trust we're able to apply those same tenets inside the jail that we have done outside of the jail. Because if they get an HVAC degree, that's $170 an hour. You get a mechanics degree, a uh, diploma, that's $160 an hour. I think when you make those type of wages, it'd be very difficult for you to make that decision to come back to jail. Thank you very much. Educational knowledge as it relates to law enforcement. I have the street knowledge 
to continue to move forward based on the knowledge that I have. You know, the community and the trust and love that I have for the community is a driving force for me. You know, 43 years old, 22 years of law enforcement, so all of my adult life has been spent doing only one thing that's serving my home and serving the people of the city of Jackson and I have it. That's what I look to continue to do. I don't have any other dreams or aspirations to do anything else but continue to serve my home. Thank you. Very well 
respect the death investigator for about 15 years of my career. So trust me, I know how to address this. I know how to investigate this. And I know how to read a report based on information that the Department of Justice, which is very highly qualified, publishes. He says it was a death due to an assault. A death due to an assault is murder, a homicide. We don't have to wait for anything to come back. We're trying to sit here and tell me that there have been five murders in our jail. Now, that's the second part of the question. My opponent was doing something else before he was appointed. If I'm elected, he can go back and doing whatever it was he was doing. I'm sure I won't be bored wherever I land after this 
job. Thank you very much. Okay, so that does it for the moderator questions. We're not going to move on to the candidate questions. And if I, I think I misspoke earlier. We're going to start with the candidate questions with uh, Captain Jones. And while the candidates are reading each other their questions and making turns answering, uh, if you have any questions the audience want to pose to the candidate, raise your hand and one of the students will bring a card to you on which to write that. And then they'll collect them um, after you get done. So raise your hand if you need a card, raise the card when you want that card collected. Okay, and we'll just put to a screen. Okay, so Captain Jones, uh, so you're going to read one question. Uh, Chair Press is going to answer. Then Chair Press is going to ask a question. Captain Jones will answer up to three questions. Okay, Captain Jones. Professional background. 
I mean, I, I can name so many things. I can name training. I can name promotions. I can name uh, my connections to the community. I can name uh, the certifications that I have gained. So with, within the certifications that I have throughout my career, my promotions that I have had, and the education and training that I have had law enforcement related, those are four of the things in my professional background that makes me qualified and only qualified for this particular position this year because it has been a continuous and consistent service. There is no breaking service. I am up to date on training. I am up to date on qualifications. Whereas you, you know, you have a major break in service during your time. Thank you. Okay, Doc. And he has me a question about being on certification too. I know you don't get I am still certified. So I just want to, yeah, I didn't ask those questions. I just want to make sure I So I am currently certified. Hey, uh, Captain Jones, your second question for <laughs> Sheriff Christmas. Sheriff Christmas, we were hired in February of this year to do a water building system with the findings, I'm sorry, with the city of Jackson. What are the findings of that, and are you still employed with the city of Jackson as well? I appreciate that question. I don't know if it's related to law enforcement, but I ask you anyway. Um, I did uh, serve as a consultant with the city of Jackson to assist with the water building system. Water building system, I think, goes a little bit in the probably worst system in America. Um, one of the things I find is that the building system in and of itself is flawed for one reason because people are not getting their after being. Uh, there were some uh, what they call adjustments or uh, projections on which type of water uh, volume that you produce each uh, each month. Obviously, it's not like you see bills. So, one of the things that we did, we make sure everybody is getting the bill. At least we recommended that they do that. We also looked at the structure in the water department. Uh, the way you pay bills is very cumbersome. I think you all know that. Nobody wants to drive all the way down to the Metro Center with their regular uh, parking lot to try to pay the bill. So we asked, we looked at bringing kiosks into different places within the community where you can make it more easy to pay the water bill. We also looked at the personnel within the water the sewer building department and the location in which where, where it was. Uh, it is not advantageous to the whole community of Jackson to have it at its current location. So we looked at putting it downtown and we found building space to do that. But there were a myriad of things, of findings that we had in order to make sure paying your bill in the city of Jackson is not only more convenient, it's more accurate. And we also found that, and this is what law enforcement, I guess, does apply to it. We went out, and me personally and physically, went out and saw all these houses that have blue laid water. We said they need blue laid water. Where they're hijacking straight by the water to the house and circumventing paying the city of Jackson. We put people in jail. So I made sure that we identified those houses that were violating the law and stealing water from the city of Jackson, thereby stealing fees, fee money from the city of Jackson and ensuring that we have them accountable. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Same plan as you have 
to move Hines County forward. If you don't have that, then you won't have the trust of your people, you won't have the trust of the department, you won't have the trust of the citizens of Hines County as well. So again, it's about how you conduct yourself as a leader, both on duty and off duty, in order to show leadership skills for the people of Hines County. Thank you. Captain Jones, your third and final question for Sheriff Christmas. <clears throat> Sheriff Christmas, you call yourself a honorable candidate. I have the utmost respect for you and your family, all right? I want to quote something that you said on October 30th on a live video. You said, man, this goes back to characteristics and traits that you just asked me. You said, man, you stupid. You've been wearing those N-I-G-G-A-S out. They're going to bust your plane. You've got them hottest fish trees. This is a live video with an individual identified as Polo that is a known criminal. He's one conviction away from being a habitual criminal. Not only that, he's wanted. He has three active warrants with the Jackson Police Department. He has slapped me, my family, friends as well as other candidates and their friends as well in this race. He has been spewing the community with false narratives. Yet it's still you, dressed in an official Hines County Sheriff's Office time, hug and praise him and make that comment while laughing at all the things that he's done. Not only that, he is a bully, he has been intimidating the community with these false narratives as well. He has slandered your hero, the late sheriff. He has ten, uh, slandered your former mentor, Sheriff McMillan. He has slandered another honorable man that has gone on to be with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the late DA, Robert Smith. Yet and still, he's been out in signatures for your campaign. Why won't you arrest Paul? You arrested David Archer. Yeah. Did you
like uh, holistically and collectively, because it's going to take the entire city of Jackson to be committed to reduce the violent crime and murder. Thank you very much. Yes, if you were elected as the next year, what would you implement within the department different from past leadership to improve the quality of living in Hines County? Well, you, you, you have to involve the community. You, you know, you have to have stakeholders available. Uh, you have to have businesses. You have to have churches. You have to have places that can be able to provide the necessary resources in an effort to address the issue. You know, you have to get them on board through collective partnerships. You have to have a platform in place, an open line of communication with these stakeholders as well. You know, we think about some of the, the issues that we're currently played with today. We think about homelessness. We think about the, the, the drug issues that we're played with. Also, you have to have mental health treatment available in every platform that you do in law enforcement today. Without having some type of mental health platform or mental health availability in place that you're able to address the mental health issues in our community, then your platform or whatever may not be or will not be successful. That includes the Hines County Detention Center facilities right now. We need a mental health board in the Hines County Detention Facility to address those that are in jail or incarcerated right now that are suffering from mental health. So these are just some of the stakeholders that you have to work with. Tickets to make sure we hold people accountable who are driving records in Hines County. 
in, in terms of, uh, and also what I want to do is certainly look at our budget and issue uh, stop sticks to every four officers in and around in, in this, uh, Harris County. Because let me tell you this, uh, this notion of driving bad, running from the police, and running from Rankin County, Madison County, Harris County, Harris County, as though you're going to have some safe haven, that's going to come to a halt. We're going to start stopping deals in the track. I don't want anybody to believe that there's some type of safe haven in Jackson, Mississippi. Last time I checked, that's in Hines County. So I don't want anybody, everything that we're going to let you make it if you run it from the other county. That's one thing. And dispatch is accountability. We're going to make sure that we hire people who qualify and dedicated like I was as a dispatcher and make sure that they're getting our officers the uh, safety to their call and make sure they're ensuring that they are uh, coming away from the call. Actually, we want to make sure that the dispatch do their job to make sure that when the victim calls in, that they are protected. So we had a uh, harbor incident down in the city of Jackson at one time where that didn't happen and somebody lost their life. So I put policies in place right now of accountability and making sure we're having the best of the best to work in our dispatch. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to the last set of questions, and these two are for each of you. So, Chair Preston, the stipulated order requires development for a pretrial services program to provide for long term population management. Recently, an inmate who should have been released from custody may have been spared from being assaulted had this requirement been satisfied. Has a pretrial services program been satisfied yet? If not, what hindrances is your administration? Yes. Uh, Has the pretrial services program been satisfied yet? If not, what hindrances are, is your administration facing beyond finances? Well, one of the things that our administration has uh, certainly incurred and this pre administration has as well, because most of this speaks to the consent decree. And the consent decree is specific into what responsibilities the sheriff department has. meets all the prerequisites of the consent decree, it's still on. The Highest County Board of Senate Supervisor has a set of prerequisites they must meet. So anytime it talks about pretrial, incarceration, or pot, or any of those things, it is one of those things that we have to pay heavily on the Board of Supervisors to ensure that they do their part to make sure that the jail is understanding. Most people don't know is that uh, the Sheriff's Department does not have uh, spending capabilities in terms of the budget. While we have oversight of our budget, once it is uh, given to us, we don't have the means of expanding it, increasing it, or any of those things because the Board of Supervisors are responsible for the board. So it would be a finance issue in terms of what prerequisites we have to meet when it comes to pretrial detainees and the process that you're talking about. But most of the hindrances will come from A, finance, and I know it's behind. B, is that jail as ragged as it can be? It was sorry when they put it on the ground. And it is sorry today. We have to get into this. I have to make the selection over it to make sure that we get a commitment from the Board of Supervisors to build us a new jail. Thank you very much. Education. 
we would instinctively we, we do so the county form as well as part of local community colleges to give inmates opportunity to not only work but gain training skills as well. Complete GED classes, take life classes, faith-based organizations for the successful re-entry into our communities. You have to partner with district attorney, you have to partner with the district attorney, and it relates to these programs as well because we're talking about reduced sentences here, we're talking about nonviolent offenders, we're talking about having to punish the offenders that are in violation of the program as well. So it's not the fact that I don't intend to do it, we cannot do it unless we renegotiate the terms of the consent decree itself, and that has to be done with the Department of Justice. And with the shape that our detention facilities are currently under right now, I'm not even sure if that is something that's even possible based on some of the things that have happened at the detention center recently and based on some of the reports that have been recently uh, published by the Department of Justice regarding the conditions of the facilities, steel repairs that should be made, manpower issues, training issues, among several other things. But again, you have to renegotiate the terms of the consent decree or if you can make any type of program with the detention facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the audience questions. We will now hear closing statements from our candidates. Chair Crystal, thank you so much. And again, I want to thank Jackson University for this uh, wonderful forum, all that was possible to allow us to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope and trust that you have uh, been able to make a clear distinction between your opponent and I in terms of who best prepared for roles of office. I am currently in the office right now, and make no mistake about it, I'm here because of my experience. My experience matters. My leadership experience, my administrative experience, my budgetary experience, and certainly my military experience best prepare me to hold this position. This is a position that is the largest, again, the largest sheriff's department in the state of Mississippi. Let me just say this, and I want to say this humbly. I apologize to those like that who think that you know, my posture, my personality is arrogant. I am anything but that. I'm just an old country boy uh, from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and I'm not the kind of person that sits here and try to make anybody believe that I'm ever going to popularity contest. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not about popularity. This is about who's best prepared to reduce the crime and violence going on in our city. And I take a tough stance on crime each and every time I have the opportunity to do so. If, you, if I come off a, a, a little aggressive, if I come off a little certain kind of way, you have to consider my background in the Marines, the Army, the Army, none of those institutions teach you to have personality. What they do teach you to do is get the job done, and that is what I'm committed to doing. My educational background, my leadership background, my administrative background, and my budgetary background distinguish me from my opponent. What the citizens of Hines County must do is, uh, again, decide to be the most popular person to hold this position, or the best popular person to hold this position. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for allowing us to uh, share our visions for Hines County through this platform. Thanks to Jackson State, thanks to all of you that attended, and thanks to uh, you that are watching via live stream. Hines County, you do not need a politician to serve as your dead Hines County Sheriff. You don't need a politician that does not know exactly what he wants to do. It's just kind of all over the place and it's run for several different offices. But get so here and tell you all that he's been dedicated to serving Hines County in a law enforcement capacity all these years. He's not true at all. He has not served in law enforcement capacity in several years, as a matter of fact. But what I can tell you is I've worked 22 years of continuous service solely here in Hines County. I have the expertise, I have the knowledge, and I have to move Hines County forward. I am not a politician, but what I can tell you is I am the police. I am about law and order. I am about enforcing law and order. This is a very selfless service. It's never about me or what I can do to show up for the public, take credit for what other agencies do, just to show a political platform as it relates 
you to Heinz County. But what I can tell you is that I am prepared to move Heinz County forward in a selfless manner. It's not about me, it's about you, citizens of Heinz County, and it's about the men and women, the rank and file of the Heinz County Sheriff's Office as well. They are the ones that should be commended for the job that they're doing day in and day out, away from their families, and serving you, the citizens of Heinz County. It should never be about the sheriff for his personal gain. It should always be about the people. Without the success of the people, the sheriff would not be successful. And this is one thing that I know that I have been groomed on through my law enforcement team is to always take care of your people and your people will take care of you. Act selfless and show the public that, that you care and that you have their best interests at heart at all times. And this is what I look to bring to the table as your next elected Heinz County Sheriff. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. 